meditation class and then if anyone has any questions they would like to ask, I'll be happy to try and answer them. A question you would like to ask. Uh, hi, Stuart. Hi. Um, can you talk about uh, personal connections and as we go deeper uh, within ourselves with this work, how we uh, manifest new relationships and opportunities? Uh, yeah. I mean, look, uh, there's more room in you for divergence of people to come in and participate in your life. When you go deeper, you're more open. You know, you have room inside yourself to not judge people, to learn from people, you know, to not be afraid of people, not be intimidated by people that are different than you or come on with strong egos. You know, you have this inner rootedness and strength inside that allows you to touch the world. And I think this is very important because by doing this, you attract people that help you to work out your karma. You know, you never know who's gonna come into your life. At least I never know who's gonna come into my life. And everybody brings something that's significant for each and all of our growth. So when you open inside, you expand the chakra system, you grow, there's more room in you for divergence. You know, there's more room in you for many different types of people to come because each and every one of them brings something different and brings something that you have to, to learn and you have to use to grow in your life. And it, it's that way on every level, whether it's relationships, whether it's jobs, businesses, you know, as you open inside, you attract a divergent type of person, many different types of people. And I think that's really healthy, you know, because it forces one to break down ego, it forces one to break down rightness, it forces us not to sit in judgment of other people, it forces us to open and to let the world be. It's an incredible world we live in. And you know, we should welcome this world into our selves so that we can learn from it and grow from it. Yeah, and certainly it also sometimes attracts difficult people, but you have the inner strength to deal with them. And you also have the inner strength to tell somebody no. You know, you don't, no. You know, I don't want this kind of behavior, this kind of you know, stuff going on in my life. All of that works, you know, and it just means that one grows, one, one is open to variants of experience and many different types of things that we can learn about ourselves and about the way God's world functions, you know. I mean, this would be a great thing for politicians to learn, you know, I really mean it, my <laughs> God, you know, there'd be such judgment and righteousness and people tearing each other apart. <laughs> Just to learn to get strong inside and allow other people to come, welcome them at the borders, they're human beings, for God's sake, you know, let them come, let them have a life. Welcome other people into our lives. They're just human beings who have something to teach us. I welcome all of you into my life. I mean, there's a place in my heart for every single person that's sitting in this class. And in order to find that place in myself, I, I have to grow. I don't have any choice. 20 years ago, that was not possible. I wasn't big enough inside. Today is becoming possible because of the growth that's taken place in my life. And you never know what you can learn from people. You know, you never know. I mean, 
I mean, I remember sitting with Rudy and, he, and somebody walked in, it was kind of like a beggar woman, you know, walked into his store. And he was so kind to her. He was so gentle with her. And he said to me, Stuart, God has a thousand masks. You never know how God is going to manifest in your life. You know, you got to be open to what, what the universe sends you. It was an incredible thing to watch. Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? Hi, Stuart. Yes. I was noticing also going deeper, it seems I'm becoming more aware of like a neutral watcher or observer watching. No judgment, watching. What is your question? Oh, could you speak about that? about a, an observer, an, almost like a neutral observer that centers. Well, you become, you know, a witness mm. to life, to God, to, you know, you're never, you're not interrupting the flow of creativity with your ego, with who you think you are, and you observe and you open to it, you learn from it. I mean, I keep repeating this, but it's so essential for any kind of inner growth. And, you know, I mean, this is really important. And there's a quiet inside, there's a peace inside, you know, and that peace in your, with yourself allows you to be peaceful with other people. And you never know how it affects people and how it changes them. You know, somebody comes angry and they come within five feet of you and that whole anger just burns out of them. And they come up and hug you. Well, I've told you that story a million times in Big Indian when I went up there and the manager was furious that I was driving a tractor and cutting the grass, screaming at me. You know, after five minutes of it, he bursted out in tears, but gave me a big hug and said, thank you. And it was only because I listened to him. I didn't fight with him. I didn't have to defend myself. I just listened. I mean, tears came in his eyes and he just hugged me and said, Stuart, thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. I've had that with so many people, you know, and I think it's a very wonderful thing and a wonderful approach to interacting with human beings. Listen to them. <laughs> just listen to them. And, you know, it makes room for somebody to be around you. And you have to have bigness of spirit, bigness of soul inside to do that kind of thing. Where you don't have to be constantly proving your point, being right, you know, putting the other person down because they have a different point of view, you know. I mean, it's not our world. We're a bunch of tourists here, you know? It's God's world. Everything that's created around us is, is a manifestation of higher energy in the universe. We need to respect it. We need to give it room to breathe, to grow, to find its path, you know? And that's people, you know? It's everything in life. And at the same time, it doesn't mean that people step all over us. And I frankly, if you have that kind of inner strength, people are not going to step all over you. They're not. Generally, their anger, it all just breaks down, you know? You know, when they're not intimidated by another human being, it breaks down and they just want to talk to you, you know? And this, you know, I, I keep saying over again, you know, to have a spiritual life, we have to find the highest levels of our humanity, not how important we are, you know, not our position in the cosmos, not being, you know, considering ourselves, you know, some kind of greatness and, you know, just 
to be, to be human, you know, to be part of this thing called humanity and bring something precious to it. Bring something from the heart. Does anyone else have a question you would like to ask? And just to finish this, don't force this on yourself or ever feel an ounce of guilt because you can't do it yet. Just say, okay, I got to work on me. This is teaching me that I have to go deeper. I have to open more. I have to grow more. Because nobody should make themselves guilty because they can't do certain things especially the things I talk about, you know? You know, don't feel guilty. Just say, okay, I'm not there yet. I got to work on me. Don't put yourself down. Don't diminish, you know, what you are as a human being because all of this is about evolving and growing. That's what, that's all this is about, evolving and growing. And hopefully when this pandemic is over, I can finish a class and just hug everybody. <laughs> I think that would be just a wonderful thing to do at the end of one of these classes. Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? So what I was gonna ask about listening to someone with that, like listening with the whole being is kind of what I hear you saying. And let's say someone is more or less chronically upset or angry. Um, and that's kind of the way they live. You know, where's the no and where's the listening that really moves mountains? You know, listen, yeah, yeah look, you, you can listen to somebody, you can learn, you can try to have compassion with them. You can try to be open with them. But you know what I have learned in my life, if somebody doesn't make the effort to work on themselves and grow, that's the point of saying, no, you have patience, you wait, you give them room to find this thing in themselves as I wanna grow, I wanna have a, more, a better life, I wanna become a happier person. And if they don't have that, and they're kind of like a vampire who just eats your energy and consumes you all the time, and when you're around them, you just feel like you're drained, you know? You know, that's the time to say no. You don't need that in your life. And I promise you, whoever that person is, they will find somebody else to do it with. As soon as you can say no. But, you know, you have to do it with patience. Give them a chance. Let them, give them the room to find their life. Give them the room to breathe, to find their creativity. And if you discover in that patience and in that time that they don't want to do a damn thing about themselves, then it's no, you don't need these people in your life. I don't need people like that in my life. And I really won't have people like that in my life. I've had enough of them, trust me. <laughs> I've had enough of them. And I don't need that. I don't need people. I, I want people, look, when I look at them, we're, I can see they truly want in their life to grow. They truly want to break down the thing that's making them a little crazy. And they want to get past it. And if somebody brings me that, I will do anything in the world for them. Anything. But if they, I don't care where they, I mean, I've had students come out of the streets, out of prisons, out of all kinds of hell holes that people have lived in. I mean, I even published a book. I mean, an amazing book called From Darkness to Light with a young lady who was in prison. And it's a series of 160 letters that we wrote to each other. And it's a very enlightening book of how a human being slowly and gradually fought their way out of hell. And how they're doing today is truly a living miracle, a testament to Rudy's work. One of the greatest testaments to Rudy's work that I know of. 
we published this book of letters and it's just really an extraordinary book, you know? So what I'm saying is if somebody, I don't care where they come from, as long as they're willing to work on themselves and grow. And I've had to put up with a lot of bullshit from people in my life. I'll tell you, when it first started out, <laughs> with that, and then gradually the ones that wanted it, they changed, they grew, they evolved. They, and many of them are doing extraordinarily well today, including myself. Because when I met Rudy, my God, that he took me as a student, you know, was certainly when he even told me, I'll never take another student like you. <laughs> he just told me that. <laughs> you know, but you got to have patience and you have to see that this person really wants to change and not just say, not lip service change they willing to make the effort to do it and if a person doesn't want to do that and all they want to do is eat your energy and consume you and suck you dry then there's a wonderful positive word in the English language and also in the Portuguese language, no, no. Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? Um, do you do any breathing or uh, like, do you have anything before the meditations that you do to warm up? Yeah, I do sometimes the so hum exercise and that really relaxes one inside. As you inhale, you just say so. As you exhale, hum. You know, you can do to warm up hatha yoga, you can do pranayama. You can do all kinds of breathing techniques that will help relax you. You know, it's perfectly part of preparing yourself to sit down and do a deep version of Kundalini Yoga. So you can do all kinds of pranayamas to relax yourself. And I know there are many of them. I used to teach them. A lot of them I've forgotten. You know, I used to <laughs> teach them years ago that you can use in order to relax yourself. Just sitting there and listening to your breath, breathing, the inhalation, the exhalation, to relax you. Thanks. I think I need to get that like 15 minutes before class and have that chunk more preparing. Yeah, do it. Everyone here should do that 15 minutes before. I, I go into a state of very deep relaxation before this class. I don't want to spend half the class fighting myself, you know? Mm -hmm. It's more important to be connected to God and open to this energy and allow it to take me to a transcendental plane than to spend, you know, half the class fighting my neurosis, <laughs> my anxiety. So do pranayama before the class, do some asanas, do whatever it takes. Take a bath, a hot bath with Epsom salt, so that works, you know, <laughs> do something to relax yourself. So that when you come to the class, you can truly do deep inner work. Does anyone else have a question you'd like to ask? Can you speak on being too relaxed? On what? On, on too relaxed, to the point of dozing off. I'm finding that to be a problem in my meditations lately. Well, look, Anna, the problem is that you're probably tired. And I, I've explained this before. Usually when you get that tiredness in meditation, I'll tell you what it usually means. It's usually resistance, you know, to going to a much deeper place inside yourself. And it's your responsibility in the meditation to move through that resistance, to break down that resistance. Because on the other side of that kind of tiredness, almost inevitably is a major opening in a person's life. And they use that as a resistance. 
to going to the next level in their life. So your job is to do the inner work, bring that tiredness into the third chakra, transform it into chi, into energy. You know, if somebody screamed fire where you're living, you'd have plenty of adrenaline to get up and run out of the house, you know? You understand? I mean, it's, it's, it, it's just priority. And we often use that kind of tiredness as an excuse for really not going deeper in ourselves. You go deeper and it's amazing how much energy you will find behind that tiredness. I'm going to work on that. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? And just to finish this up, just remember, as you go deeper, you hit new pockets of experience, new tension, new, you know, things that you've repressed, that you've buried inside yourself. And these things come up to the surface. And it's like dredging a river. You bring them up to the surface, you draw them into the chakra system, you transform them into chi, you know, and then the energy moves through the sexual area and it becomes a force that activates Kundalini which is our pathway to God. So you can expect that every meditation is going to be, you know, like uh, peace in the valley, you know, you hit all kinds of different pockets of energy inside. And that's not negative. It's a very positive thing because you're freeing yourself of things that often keep people in prison, you know, emotional and psychological prisons most of their life. And if you hit those pockets, yeah, it might be difficult, it might be painful, you might even get a little depression, and, but just open your heart, feel a little gratitude that you're freeing yourself of these things, you know? I mean, it's a different way of approaching life, but it's a very good way of approaching life. You know, it's like often in medicine, you got to get the disease in order to get inoculated from the disease, you know? Does anyone else have a question you would like to ask? Okay. Well, thank you. Bless you all. Thank you for being here. As I say, one day we'll be able to do this and hug, big hugs after class and lots of love that way. And it's a joy. And it's a joy. And I'd like to thank Daniel for <laughs> my book. <laughs> we broke the ice in Portugal, in Brazil. Mm. The first Portuguese versions of my book. I found customers. I think that's a joy. <laughs> thank you. God bless you all. And I will see you all, uh, I guess, on Sunday. Have a great Thank you, Stuart. Thank, Thank you. Wonderful class, Stuart. Wonderful.